Welcome to Ring Theory. In this video, I'd like to focus in on the forgotten drama from the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. With all the online criticism facing Amazon's new TV series, Lord of the Rings The Rings of Power, it's important to remember that the original trilogy was not free from complaints. Not at all. Tom Bombadil was excluded completely, elves were turning up at Helm's Deep, and the army of the dead was popping up where it should be. These are now considered changes that made sense for the on-screen adaption, however, there was one big change that left viewers somewhat bewildered. Cast your mind back to December 2003. You've just come out the cinema after seeing the conclusion of the greatest film trilogy of all time. You're on your way home, and somebody says in the car, wait, what happened to Saruman? For fans like myself, who are avid watchers of the extended editions every year, it is easy to forget that Saruman was cut completely from the Return of the King's cinematic release. With Sauron being an off-screen villain, Saruman was the main antagonist in the first two instalments of the trilogy. We see him trapped in Isengard after being penned in by Treebeard, the Ents, Merry and Pippin at the end of the Two Towers, and then he's not seen again. What made this particular omission worse for book fans is the chapter at the end of the books titled The Scouring of the Shire. Here the hobbits return home like they do at the end of the films, but upon their return they discover that Saruman has taken over the Shire. This gives them one last evil to overcome before the ending. This left book lovers in the cinema looking around the theatre waiting for a final gasp because they know that Saruman is going to be there. But all they got was this. Suffice to say, the late, great Christopher Lee did not take it well. Apparently, he was just as surprised as book fans at the exclusion. He said the following at a Q&A when talking about the trilogy. We were all shown the films in private, and when the third film came on, I couldn't believe what I saw, because I wasn't in it. The scene is one of the most important scenes in the whole trilogy, because it's Saruman, the great mortal enemy, the most evil of them all, against the Fellowship. And I'm on top of the tower at Isengard, looking down at the Fellowship and saying very nasty things to them. To Aragorn, this man from the woods will never be king, and so on. It was a long sequence, the final confrontation between the Fellowship and their greatest enemy. And it wasn't in the film. No one could understand it. There were millions of hits on the internet, not just from Tolkien fans and film fans, but from everybody who had seen the first two. They said, what happened to Saruman? Well, buy the extended DVD. Rumour has it that Christopher Lee didn't forgive Peter Jackson until many years later, when he reprised his role as Saruman in The Hobbit Trilogy. Sadly, this was one of his last and few appearances on the big screen. In regards to his suggestion that we buy the extended editions, when we did, we found out the conclusion to his story in the films and were treated to a great scene, including a somewhat redeeming act of Grima Wormtongue. I think in general that I'm a more forgiving fan than most, and understood the reason to omit the scouring of the Shire chapter from the films. One of the most common comments I see on the Lord of the Rings first time watch videos is people saying, how many endings does this film have? To add one more, probably would have been too much. Nevertheless, I would have loved nothing more than to see the Hobbits band together and defeat Saruman in one final skirmish on screen. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with the Lord of the Rings, Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy and the new TV show. If you like the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button.